In this tutorial we're going to work with the previous file that we've set up to become a drawing template. This time we're going to add a title block and a border. This means that we can use it for future drawings and put information onto it. I'll begin by adding a border. I do that by going to the Manage tab and going to this little area of the ribbon here and I have this on here called Border. I'm going to click this button and you'll see that the tools change. I'm going to draw a rectangle. I'm just going to pull the rectangle from the top left down to the bottom right. I'm then going to use the dimension tool to just control the gap between the border and the side of the page and I'm going to make that 8mm all the way around. So that gives us a nice neat border. When I've done that I press the green tick here to finish the sketch. I'm just going to call it standard border and I'm going to save the changes. You might be surprised to see that the border disappears. To make it reappear what we have to do is go to the folders that we have over here in the browser bar, open the one called drawing resources, open the one called fold uh, borders and then double click on the standard border that's now appeared, the one that we've just created. Now I'm ready to add a title block. Press the button called title block. Again the tools will change so you've got the standard sketching tools. This time I'm going to use the rectangle tool to add a series of rectangles one inside the other. I'm going to be deliberate about this and I'm not going to draw it right down in the bottom corner. I'm going to move it all later. I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to make it 110mm from left to right and I'm going to make it 35mm tall. I'm now going to draw a long slender rectangle inside. I'm going to make sure I get the green dot to snap to the corners. I'm going to start there, I'm going to pull away to the right hand side and I'm then going to control the height of it. It's obviously going to be 110mm wide but I want it to be 10mm tall. I'm going to do something similar I'm going to draw another rectangle here, which is quite close to square, but it's actually going to be 35mm wide and it's going to be 25mm tall. The 25mm height is controlled, I just need to control the width from left to right, typing in 30 and pressing enter. I'm now going to divide this section in two and I'm going to do that by drawing a further rectangle. I'm going to snap to this point. I'm going to pull across till I get to here and I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to make this 12.5. I'm now going to subdivide this into a small section that's 30mm wide. So I'm going to click in the bottom left corner and make sure I snap. I'm going to pull up to the left and I'm going to control the width and make it 30. I'm now going to draw a couple of lines for information to be aligned on. I'm just going to draw a line starting about here. I'm going to pull it through to here. I'm now going to right click on it. I'm going to just press OK and I'm going to right click. I'm going to make that. Later on I'm going to make that invisible. I'm just using this line for now to align text so that it all sits at the same height in these two boxes. To add text, you can see an icon here. When you press this icon, you can see the cursor changes to a little cross here. I'm going to add an item of text here. I'm just going to pull a box out. I'm going to open that there. As soon as you finish pulling the box out, this menu will open and you can type the text. So the message I want to appear in this box is scale. one to one, then all sizes in millimetres. You see the colour is green, I can change the colour if I want, so I'm just going to make that black. If I press OK, I'll see the size of it. At the moment the size is set at 3.5 millimetres tall. 
that looks a, an appropriate size. If you want to make something smaller, I would hit the escape key, I would click on it, I would right click on it, and I would find the edit text command. And I can go back in here and I can make it bigger or smaller. Let's see what it would look like as 3mm text. It's a bit smaller. That looks perfect. I'm now going to do the same kind of thing down here. We drag out a box just along this line to keep it aligned with what's going to be on the right hand side. This time I'm going to just write name. At this point you'll write your own name in this box. Again I can change the colour of it or I can change the size of it. In this instance I've changed it to black and I'm also going to change it to 3mm. You can see that it's slightly too high, so I'm just going to pull the text down until it sits on the line. To speed things up and to make sure your text all stays the same, what you can also do is you can right click on it and you can copy it and you can move somewhere else and you can right click and you can paste. So you end up with two instances of the exact same text. I don't want name to appear twice, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this piece of text, I'm going to edit the text, and this is the one that we're going to change to the date. So when you create a piece of work, you'll edit the date here to today's date. You can see that that's not perfectly aligned, so I'm just going to pull it down a bit lower. I can now delete this line, because it's only been used to align the two items of text. I'm going to add one further item of text. I'm going to do that down at the bottom. I'm going to write the name of the project here. And I'm going to press OK. So, when you're working on any drawing, you can edit these text entries to the appropriate things. Obviously, you'll put your own name in, you'll change the date, and you'll write the name of the project you're working on here. This item here can stay the same. I created this box for a particular purpose. A little image is going to go in here. An image that tells people that we're drawing in third angle projection. To insert the image, if you go here, you'll get an image insert command. What it's looking for me to do now is to click the location that I want the image to go in. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to drag. Now a dialog box will open and what it will do is it will want me to point it to where the file I want to insert is. So where's this photograph of this image that I've saved? I'll make this file available for you. And that's it there. I'm going to hit the escape key. I'm just going to manipulate this. I'm going to stretch it slightly because it's out of proportion. I'm just going to get it centered and I think that looks about perfect. What I'll do now is I'll press the green tick to finish this title block but only after I've positioned everything down in the bottom right. So you'll notice that this title block is not in the right position. I'm going to drag around everything, and I'm going to just pull it over into position. And it should snap in place to the border. Now that I've got the title block in position, I press the green tick to finish the sketch. It's asking me to save it with a particular name. I'm just going to call it standard title block. And I'm going to save that. And again it disappears. So what I have to do is go over to the browser bar, find the folder. Inside the one called Drawing Resources, you find one called Title Blocks. And I can now see standard title blocks appeared. If I double click on that, that now appears in my drawing. And it's going to be there forever after. What I'll do now is I'll save this by hitting the little save icon. And now if I open up this template file, and I place drawings into it, I'm always going to have this information, I'm always going to have this photograph or this little image, and I'm also going to have all of my dimensions and my annotation appearing in the form that we controlled by changing things in the styles editor.